All right, welcome back guys for video number two. Uh, today we're gonna go a little bit deeper into element lists and how you can use that with regression. You know, when you wanna do regression, when you wanna do uh, element lists, and we're gonna be covering more of the math theory behind how Desmos works, instead of like actual functions of Desmos, which we covered in the first video. So yeah, this is gonna be more of the math theory of why some of the more niche stuff works. And this will play a really big role in a lot of the problems on the SAT. So it's very important that we cover it. First, I want to cover how regression works for Desmos. As long as you have the same amount of points as you do constants, generally you're gonna get a graph that fits those points. For example, if we have a table with two points like this, and we do a linear regression, we're solving for M and we're solving for B. That's two specific variables we're solving for and we have two points. It's gonna fit those points perfectly as you can see with our R squared equals one. But if we you know, add another point and it just happens to not lie on that line, then we're gonna be off and it's not gonna hit those points exactly. Then it's gonna use the statistical definition of regression to try to find the best fitting line. But that's not what we're dealing with. In SAT regression, we're always dealing with the points perfectly aligned. I won't say always, but usually. Okay, so how does it behave? Well, if we have this linear regression, or the linear standard equation, y equals mx plus b. And we want to know what is this equation when we have the points 0, 1 and 2, 3. How this will work, if you were to solve it by hand, is you would set up a system of equations, right? So you would take our, this is our y value, this is our x value, because that's how coordinate systems work, x, y. We would take our y value, 1, we would set it equal to m times our x value, 0, plus b. And we would do that again, except with these points, x comma y. Take the y value, 3, equals mx, which is 2, plus b. And we would solve that system of equations. So on the top, we would get 1 equals b. And on the bottom, we would get 3 equals 2m plus b. We know that b is 1, so we would plug 1 in right here. We would get 3 equals 2m plus 1. Then we would subtract the 1 on both sides, 2 equals 2m. And so m equals 1 as well. And now if we were to do that in Desmos with a table, type in table, and we put in the points 0, 1, and 2, 3, and we do it a linear regression, we would get m equals 1, b equals 2. So really, this is just a system of equations. And in the last video, we talked about how we can do a system of equations in Desmos. So we can set this, the same system of equations up right here in Desmos. If you recall from last video, we would set up a system of equations like this. We would go uh, the left side of the first equation, the left side of the second equation, brackets, regression, and then m times zero, the right side of the first equation, comma, the right side of the second equation. Right, and it does the same thing because that's what the system equation solves for. But you can see we're using the same format here, right? We're using the same y1 equals mx1 plus b. We have a y right here and we have an mx plus b right here. We have a y right here. We have a mx plus b right here. So we could keep that same form and go y is mx plus b for the y values being 1 and 3 and our x values are 0 and 2, right? And that does the same thing. These are all the ways that Desmos is thinking. I'm trying to show you different ways of, ex of expressing it so that uh, you understand really what Desmos is thinking. So what it's doing is it's doing this right here is doing the exact same thing as, uh, as, as this line right here. It's keeping this format and just plugging in the system equations, right? So really we can replace this actually. Now we're, let's replace all the y1s with this, with the element list. Let's replace the x1 with this element list. So this also does the same thing, right? We just have to put the m on the other side so it knows that it's multiplying, right? These are all doing the exact same thing. It's all setting up that system of equations to solve the regression of the graph. So we can use the same thing for quadratic functions or for you know quartic functions or you know however however more you want to go it's you can use it for any equation you want it's just important to know that you need the same amount of points as unknowns or more but if you have more points than unknowns you need to make sure that those points will actually fit the equation for instance if we have a line that goes through these points one two three four five six that's okay because when i know that all three of these lines will go through 
or all three of these points will go through the line. But if we add a third point that you know doesn't work, that's not good. One point per variable we're solving for is always a good starting point. But if we add a third, that is okay. And we can just check to see if it fits, right? If r squared stays one, then we know that it's a good point. That's a good point. This technique can also be used for rewriting expressions. So let's say we have the equation uh, ax plus three, five x squared, minus bx plus four and that all that equals 20x cubed minus 9x squared minus 2x plus 12 and that's true for all values of x what that's saying is that no matter what the value of x when we plug it into this left side plug it into this left side plug it into this left side we calculate all that whatever number pops out on this left side is going to be equal to what happens if we plug in that same value of x right here right here and right here so we could effectively split that up into y equals the left side, ax plus 3, 5x squared minus bx plus 4. And we can split up onto the right side, y equals 20x cubed minus 9x squared minus 2x plus 12. What it's saying is this y value needs to equal the y value for every single value of x. So let's maybe go ahead and visualize that real quick. If we have y equals ax plus 3, 5x squared minus bx plus 4. And we have y equals 20x cubed minus 9x squared minus 2x plus 12. What that's saying is for every value of x that we plug in, the y value needs to be the same on this graph right here. So basically the graphs need to completely align with each other. They need to look like the exact same graph. We could try to make that work. We could try dragging these, right? Oh, draggy, draggy, draggy. And like try to align it, right? That would be pretty difficult. So what's the way we can get Desmos to solve this for us? Well, an interesting thought would be, let's try to use regression. Well, we have one, two. We have two variables that we're solving for. So let's try to get two points and just turn this into a regression. And that's a good idea. So we, what we can do is change this to f of x. And now we can make a table and we can change this to f of x sub one. So that what that will do is if we plug in one, it'll give us the output of this. So if we look at one, we can see the output is 21 and we can put in a second point two, and the output is, as we can see, 132. And then we can use a basic regression using the same format. So we're going to reference that header f of x sub one, which is this right here. So we're talking about these values, just like in the beginning of the video. We set up a system of equations. So these two values, the first part of our system of equations, the left-hand sides of our two equations, equals the right-hand sides of our two equations, which is this, these two points right here, when we plug them in, so our x1s. So we need to make sure we're referencing our x1s. Now, as you can see, it automatically snaps this red graph right on top of our blue graph. So they're the same graph. So what that means is that for every x value, the y value is the same, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted the y values to be the same. But there has to be a quicker way to do this, right? Because setting up an entire table just to do this is a little lengthy. So let's skip the middle man of the table. What we can do is set up the system of equations ourselves. We can go ahead and plug in this side right here. Let's go ahead and just write it out so we can visualize it. This part is a bit it's not really necessary, but I'm going to still do it just to, to visualize what Desmos is doing. Plus 3, 5x squared, that's bx plus 4. We don't really need a y equals. It does the same thing. As long as there's only x's on the right side, it does the same thing. Okay, and then let's go ahead and do our regression. So this is where the actual meet, and we can do it all in this one line. We just need a second line real quick, but the majority of everything is done in this one line. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say this equals this or tilde but we remember we have to use specific variables when we're using tilde so i'm just going to turn these all into specific variables and you can see we've taken out the y that's really what we've done from the lengthier version to this version we've taken out the y so you might be asking yourself how come this isn't working right we wanted these graphs to be the same but the purple graph isn't working and i'll actually tell you it is working look at this it's saying that the y value is the same right when x equals one. And we can see that when x is one, indeed the graphs have the same y value. Because Desmos can't think for the entirety of the graph, we want it to be the same, but we can tell it that. We can turn this from using one, we can turn this into our system of equations. How many equations do we need? Well, we need two, because we're solving for a and b. So we can set x one equal to, just like we did before, our points, one and two. And now it'll snap perfectly, right? When we only had one, it only snapped to one. 
once we put in our second point, like two, it'll immediately snap there. And you can see what we can do is we can not put in three points, right? We can not put in four points. We can not put in five points. Our RMSE still stays zero, which is means we have a perfect, you know, regression. Nothing is impossible to, to fit perfectly. So we can add more points. That's not a problem. That's similar to just saying we have, like in the very beginning of the video, the line y equals mx plus b. We have the points 0, 1, 2, 3. And we can add more points, right? We can add 4, 5. We could add 6, 7. We can add these points. That's not a big deal. If we add 0 and 1, 2 and 3, this is effectively doing the same thing. mx1 plus b. Uh, oh, we're talking about y2 and x2 because we're referencing these headers here. It's completely fine to keep on adding 4, 5 and 6, 7, which is what we're doing right here. We're just adding more points that we know perfectly fit. If you started getting an RMSE that's greater than, this is basically zero. When you see such a low number, like something times 10 to the negative 14, that's such a low number, it's basically zero. If you kept on doing this and you saw something that was not zero, then you know that you have a problem. But really, like when we look at this, it would make sense that the RMSE stayed zero. We could keep on doing this because it's snapped everywhere. Th these two graphs are snapped indefinitely. So yes, the Y value is going to be the same at one. Yes, the Y value is going to be the same at two. But we only need two because we're only solving for two variables. So let's try just one more, uh, a little bit more complicated, just so we get you know, an understanding of how this works. It's going to look like uh, x minus 1 times x squared plus 9 minus 3, 5x squared minus 4x plus 2. And we want to rewrite it in the form of ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So they're really saying we want these two expressions to be equal for all values of x. So let's do that. I'm not going to use all the other long methods that I showed for the previous one because those were sort of just a build up to understanding how the shortest method works. So I'm going to go straight to the shortest method, which is plugging in the first equation with specific variables. Minus 3 times 5x1 squared minus 4x1 plus 2 equals ax1 cubed plus bx1 squared plus cx1 plus d. Okay, and I do still want to add a little visualization. This is not important, it's not required, but it does help sort of understand when you're doing these problems for the first time. So we don't even need the y equals if there's only x on the right side. So here's the graph that we're trying to copy. We wanna copy it into the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. All right, so you'll see that it's chosen x equals one, and it'll always default to x equals one. And you can see that yes, the y value is the same when x one equals one. Oh, how crazy, it's almost like Desmos knows what it's doing. All right, so let's start off with that. Let's start off with one. Now, let me try to add a two in there. Oh, what do you know? It snapped at one and it snapped at two. Good job, Desmos knows that the y values need to be the same when the x value is one and when the x value is two. Let's try to add three in there. Great, so now Desmos knows that the y values are the same when x is one, when x is two, and when x is three. All right, let's plop maybe a 17 in there. And at that point, it perfectly snaps. So why is it then? Well, because we have one, two, three, four points. We have four points and one, two, three, four variables that we're solving for, for constants. In this case, our variables, our specific variables are being used as constants. And at that point, it perfectly snaps. And you'll see if we keep on adding more, we can add any points we want, four or you know, 20 or negative 19, doesn't matter. They'll stay the same. The RMSC stays at zero. It's just a computational error at that point because it's so big. But yeah, our graphs will stay the same. And that's how we rewrite it very quickly with Desmos. So in the shortest way possible, we would get rid of the visualization. After you've done a lot of practice problems, you realize you don't need that. And then what you can do is you can use Desmos's dot, dot, dot feature. So one dot, 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 four, because we're using four variables. Now, the important thing to know is you will get undefined if you try to put an x value in here that's impossible for this to work. So as an example, I'm going to give you this problem that's very similar, except just slightly different. So we're told we have this expression, 1 over x plus 4 plus 4 over 4x minus 3. And that was supposed to equal ax plus b over cx squared plus dx plus f. 
right? That just looks yucky and awful. That would involve a lot of adding fractions and finite common denominators and just gross. Or we can do it in Desmos. So just like before, we can put up our visualization if we would like. You don't have to do this, but we would put up our 1 over x plus 4 plus 4 over 4x minus 3. So here now is the graph that we're looking at. And we want to write something ax plus b over cx squared plus dx plus f. That is the exact same as this. So what we can do, change all of these with specific variables, put a regression, and put in the right side and change all these to specific variables. And we can see that it's snapping at x equals 1, which indeed it is. But we want it to snap at more than that. We want it to snap you know, maybe at everywhere from x1 equals you know, negative 5. All right, great. It snaps at negative 5. And let's say we want it to snap at negative 3. It does that. Now it snaps at negative 5 and negative 3. But what if we tried to put in negative 4? Negative 4. It'll say we couldn't find any region where this model is defined. And that's because there's no value for x that works, right? You can't put in x because there's an asymptotic limit at x equals 4 negative four. So we have to make sure that we don't put anything that breaks in the equations, but anything else works. So we can do one, we can do two. And as soon as we put in that fourth one, should be five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so let's try a fifth one. So while these are gross variables, uh, they work and they, they make these, uh, these graphs true. So yeah, that is how we use element lists and regressions for the SAT. A little bit of math theory. Hope y'all enjoyed it. And, uh, Look forward to doing some more Desmos videos in the future. See ya.